Hello learners, hope you are keeping well and studying uh, smart and hard for the prelims. I'm sure that you're going to do very well and do yourself proud at the end of the year. I want to thank you for all the positive comments and inputs that you have been uh, giving me on Facebook, etc. It's highly appreciated. And I know uh, there's been a huge demand for the sections under economic geography that will be tested for 2022 and 2023. So, I know that many of the textbooks, et cetera, of course, they have been set before, do not have these sections because they're specific for this year. So uh, I've decided, uh, you're being such intelligent students, that I will cover these sections. But it must be known that some of the sections have already been covered in my previous YouTube videos and presentations. So I'm going to go through them. Remember, each one is set for your actual November 2022 and 2023, okay? So, if you need to know what sections will be covered, uh, you can always go to your exam uh, guideline and it actually highlights to you all the sections. So let's get going and look at what sections have already been covered by me. Let's take the prescribed agricultural product, sugarcane. Now, if you go to my agricultural products on, uh, on the video on, on this section, you'll notice sugarcane is covered. Then the prescribed mineral for this year is gold. Also, on my video or YouTube video dealing with prescribed minerals, that's also covered. Then you go for these two years, November and June, uh, November 22 and June 2023, you will notice that Gauteng is covered in my previous presentation on core industrial region. So those three have been covered already. What has not been covered that has been selected for this year is the Durban Pine Town core industrial region. And of course, the Dubai Trade Port IDZ and the Maputo Corridor SDI. That will be done in my next presentation on YouTube. Today, we're focusing on the PWV, uh, sorry, the Port Elizabeth Newton Hague area. Apologies, learners. So let's get going with this. Now, the Durban Pine Town Core Industrial Region, as I'm highlighting here, a very important region for industrial development in South Africa. But looking at what we need to look at, its location, factors influencing location, and I'm going to do that with factors favoring development because they're more or less the same. Then we look at main industrial activities. And then, of course, factors favoring and hindering uh, the success or development of these core industrial regions. Lastly, we look at economic and social impacts of the prescribed core industrial region. Okay, so let's get going to the slides. Now, we must remember at the outset that all core industrial regions must be known, eh? I'm just revising over that. It's also in my video, the past one, the PWV, the Durban Pine Town, the Pinteneg, and the Southwestern Cape. Okay. Now, remember one more point that we need that's important. This is a form of industrial centralization where a large amount of industries are in one area, okay? They are in one area. Now, the Durban Pine Town uh, core industrial region, you see it's situated between Durban and Pine Town, or in Durban to Pine Town. Of course, 
This is the second largest core industrial region in South Africa. So it plays a big part. Not as big as the Gauteng or PWV core industrial region, but it's the second largest. It's situated in KwaZulu-Natal on the East Coast. And what do, do we start thinking already? The big harbor at Durban, eh? Durban is actually a break of bulk point where we have uh, one type of transport changing to another. So by using ship, et cetera, it creates lovely accessibility and cheaper transport, okay? So there's another map here which shows you Durban Pine Town and uh, the area that it's covering in that region in KwaZulu Natal, okay? To apologize for the quality of the map, but the best one I could get for that region. Okay, so next point, the main industrial activities. Okay, when we look at that, and I'm gonna move my slide around here, my ugly face. Okay, so the main industrial region, uh, industries in the Durban Pine Town, and the very important industries also, is fuel refineries, all right, like here, Chemical industry, you find a lot of the paints, etc., come from this area. Sugar refinery, obviously, because sugar is one of the largest uh, productive in terms of agricultural products in KwaZulu Natal. So it's obvious we're going to have the sugar refinery there, one of the top sugar producers in the world. Textiles, your cloth, your coating, ship repairs, it's next to the harbor. So it's obviously going to have ship repair, paper industries. In fact, sometimes we call it the paper and pulp industries. All right. So because of the number of forests and of course, motor car assembly as indicated here, Toyota. All right. Now, factors that favor, factors favoring industrial development. And notice what I'm doing here, learners. I'm saying location, because they're more or less the same factors that will affect development and location. Now, of course, the big factor here is the Durban Harbor. That Durban Harbor is the busiest in the whole of Africa. And that helps us with import and export. That's your freight, your large quantities that are transported by either ship, rail, air, etc. So that is a big factor that favors the industrial development in the Durban Pine Town. Raw materials, a variety of raw materials is found in this area. Most of it is actually uh, agricultural related, sugarcane, milk, fruit, all right? Some of the examples. And of course, sugarcane is the largest one of all. Labor force, both skilled, and unskilled is available. Uh, the Durban Pine Town region has a large number of people there, a good water supply, all right? Because of the good rainfall, we have between 800 to 1,000 millimeters of rainfall in this region, very good rainfall. And then of course, a good transport network, and it's linked well to the interior, places like Gauteng, with over 15 million people. What a good market, All right? We have lovely rail, we have lovely roads leading through. It can be by trucks, by train, leading to Gauteng. But another big advantage is the harbor, which links us to international markets, okay? That's brilliant, all right? So I apologize, uh, I've got a very old computer, so sometimes it kicks off, I need to win the lotto, maybe get another computer for myself. So my apologies if it does uh, go blank and come back again, but we need to do the section. Okay, so good transport networks, both interior, where you go to counting, and the international markets. Then we have a power supply and we have enough coal from Newcastle mainly. And then of course, neighboring Impumalanga, where we get our 
coal, which can uh, generate uh, electricity and power supply for us. Obviously, because of our linkages, we have local and international markets. So this makes this area very, very attractive for development, etc., especially industrial development. Also related to our raw materials is the high temperatures, which is actually good for the growing season. So we get a good crop and uh, or agricultural output from this region. So this region has a lot of factors that favor uh, its development in this area, all right? Or location in the area. Factors hindering, obviously with such a large number of industries in one area, it's going to result in an over concentration of industries, okay? And that happens in all our regions. So what's going to happen? There's going to be a strain on resources such as water supply, power supply, and also load shedding doesn't do us much favors. So it's definitely going to have a, a challenge for this area. Then a strain on transport infrastructure because of so many trucks, uh, all these issues around there, all right? That's going to actually create a lot of traffic congestion so movement of goods, et cetera, inland and around in the surrounding area is going to be a challenge when there's traffic congestion. The large amount of freight that actually accumulates in this area to be sent out and sometimes can create delays at the harbor, all right? Where you may sometimes, sometimes spend a week, two weeks or more that uh, freight is actually lying at the harbor before it can be dispatched. So that is a huge downfall or challenge for the area to get the goods out. The customer needs the goods, it keeps storing. The goods coming in now have a challenge to be stored at the harbor, okay? Industries, especially the heavy industries, create a lot of pollution, okay? A lot of pollution in the area. So that is another challenge. And then the laws, on air quality that actually stipulates the uh, rules to industries regarding reducing pollution. These rules are necessary. And you notice climate change and global warming is coming in uh, more seriously impacting on our environments and on us uh, uh, personally. It makes it necessary for the well-being of South Africans and his people, but it could hinder development, all right? In the sense that we find that industrial development will be hindered due to additional costs incurred by industries to actually stick to this law. And as I said to you earlier, load shedding and increased costs of electricity create challenges for this area. So there's a lot of factors favoring uh, the development and the location, but there's also factors hindering then the social impacts, remember social dealing directly with the people, right? With all these industries, there'll be an availability of employment, all right? Opportunities down here. So employment will increase, all right? Then the earning potential also increases because now the skills development, et cetera, that's needed to be done because more industries, uh, we have more electronics, et cetera. So they need more skilled labor. And of course, more skilled labor will result in better earning potential, okay? Poverty is reduced, of course, through to employment. More people employed, less poverty. And because of this area developing, the services also become necessary to develop, to attract, attract investors, etc. So accessibility to services and facilities, whether it's health, uh, education, right? All these services now become more readily available in the area as it develops. 
And generally, there will be an improvement in the standard of living of people, because some of them could be uh, moving up and afford the basic needs. Some people can get more earning potential and afford more luxuries. So the quality of life will increase. And you can see the beautiful areas, the beach. Yo, I wish I was there now, but I have to teach my metrics tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and then the infrastructure, the harbor. So it's a lot of activity and a lot of infrastructure development. Okay. So the economic impacts, remember employment is both economic and social. Okay. More people earning money because they employed results in a larger local market. So a larger amount of goods can be sold in the Durban Pine Town area already before it's sent out to other big regions in South Africa and also to be exported. It promotes development of new and existing infrastructure. So what do I mean by this? So uh, the existing infrastructure is upgraded. New infrastructure comes out as the area develops. We would need better quality roads, new roads, more power lines, more piped water, more offices, buildings. All these things develop. So it's good for the economy. Efficient transport networks move raw materials and finished goods. Because remember, we need the raw materials to come in efficiently and quickly so production can go on. Plus, we need the finished goods to leave as soon as possible. And by increasing the infrastructure development, especially the transport networks, this will allow for efficient movement of raw materials and goods. And also promotes domestic and international trade. People look for accessibility. People look for cheap transport. People look for the facilities in the area. All right. So all these things will promote people who want to come to the area to invest, etc. So international markets of trade will be actually encouraged by these areas. It contributes significantly to the GDP of Republic of South Africa. Remember, GDP is the goods and services produced within the country. And what is this doing, the Durban Pine Town area? It's producing goods and services in the country. Therefore, it contributes significantly to the GDP of RSA. And lastly, on my slide here, it promotes investment. What an ideal place to put your investment. Cheaper transport, established infrastructure, whether it's transport, whether it's uh, power lines, whether it's other facilities. It's ideal to set up your investors. So people will invest from other countries, from within South Africa, therefore creating more economic impacts on this region. Okay, so... That actually finishes off my slides on the Durban Pine Town region. Uh, I know you were waiting for this. You have it now and work well with it. All right. And all the best till the next lesson, learners.